Hey guys, Rhonda Draculis here, RK3 Designs, and I have a special guest, Michelle. I've known Michelle for years, and I am so excited and honored that she is gonna share her talent with you. So today we're gonna do a finish that is inspired by one of my favorite things, coffee. <laughs> Both of our favorite things. That's right. Hey guys, I'm Michelle. I am with Desert Daisy Designs. I am from Mission, Texas. I am as far south as you can get in Texas. And I am new to epoxy, kind of. I am about a year and a half into this and I am with my mentor, Rhonda. Oh. She has taught me everything I know. I think she is the guru lady in this business. And today we're gonna do a little coffee inspired marble that we are calling Churro Latte Marble that is inspired by our favorite drink here from the Seguin Coffee Factory. Yeah, so it was really funny. We were working in the shop yesterday and Michelle was like, ah, I need some coffee. So we jumped in the car and we went and voila, we now have a finish. We do. So I'm excited. So tell us what you're gonna do. So we're going to do, we're gonna start out doing a melded marble today. We are going to start with a just resin product that you can get from Artist Till Death great products. The rest are all going to be stone coat countertop and you can get all of these products I believe mm -hmm. from on my website. website. Yeah. Yeah. The first is going to be a white metallic. We're going to use a pearl metallic and I'm also going to use the aluminite white. My all-time favorite color though is the aluminite brown. How about you? You love, love this it. brown? My this very my... favorite brown out there. In I the think world. it's the best color in their arsenal. I really do. I don't think any piece is complete though without a little diamond dust, so we're gonna sprinkle some of that in here too. What do you say? Mix up some epoxy and get started? Let's go, I'm ready. Okay, so as we start adding our epoxy to these cups, sometimes the brown can get a little bit overpowering. It's a very strong opaque dye. I don't want it to be too overpowering. So instead of just putting it directly to my cup, when I know I'm only gonna mix a little bit, I like to put it directly on my popsicle stick. I'm only gonna mix a little bit, so I'm putting it in a small cup this time. So I'm gonna add it directly to just a few drops on the popsicle stick is all I'm gonna need for this amount that I'm gonna put into this cup. So what I do is we've already added the mica powder into the cup, but if I were to dump epoxy straight into my cup right now, a lot of times it's really hard to mix because the cups have a little reservoir down here. And as you're stirring, the powder kind of sticks in those reservoirs and it's really hard to get them out. So what I'm gonna do is make a little slurry. And Erica from Artist Till Death is the one that kind of turned me on to this. And I use it all the time. So I'm taking isopropyl alcohol and I'm gonna mix it and I'm not gonna make it super runny. I'm only gonna make it like a paste. And what this allows me to do is get in those crevices and really stir it up and kind of pre-mix it before I put the epoxy in there. So then when the epoxy goes in there, it mixes up so much nicer and I don't get those little uh, fishtails or starburst from the mica powder not being mixed up well enough. So I just kind of have it like a paste. So now I'll add my epoxy. How much do you want, a half a cup? Uh, no, that's the pearl. I would go up about three quarters okay. of the way. And as little as you saw me put on that stick a minute ago with this brown, look how opaque that is. It doesn't take much on that color. And how gorgeous is that? Absolutely gorgeous. And now you can see how easily that and how fast I mixed the powder with the epoxy. Because if I'd have gone straight in over that dry epoxy, I would really have to stir and stir and stir. And now look at it. There's no lumps. It's very, very smooth. So, and it's also not sticking in the bottom of my cup. So what we've done, we had a little bit of extra resin in the cup. We're just gonna stick it on top so that we're not wasting any material. Then what we're gonna do with the amount of material that fell out is we're gonna kind of grease the board a little bit. When we do the meld and marble, we want the epoxy to kind of move and to slide. So if we pre-grease our board, basically, we're gonna help the epoxy flow and it's not gonna get hung up and have surface tension on our board. Okay, so we just heated it up just a little bit because it's a little bit cool in here. And now she's just gonna take a stick and it doesn't really matter 
what it looks like. Basically, we're trying to get material on the board. That That's really all we're trying to do with this. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be in every little nook and cranny. Epoxy's gonna run where there already is epoxy on the board. So Just I'm out of personal preference, and there's, you know, you hear Rhonda say often, there's no rhyme or reason to it. There really isn't. Um, epoxy moves the way it wants. Usually it's preference on what colors we lay down. For me, preference is I start with dark colors. I don't know why other people start with their light colors. When it comes to my pearls, I lay my darker pearl down. It's always the yellow tinted pearl. I will always start with that. This is gonna be a lot of pearl white, pearl yellow, and your white mica and white. So the, the pearl, the mica pearl that we're using is from Stone Coat Countertop. And it has more of that amber color as the pearl that we're using from Just Resin. It's more of a, a, a white type pearl. And then the powder, the mica powder, white mica powder is gonna be our brightest of the three colors. This Just Resin, I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, has an iridescence to it. It is absolutely stunning. It has a beautiful, beautiful iridescent look to it. It's gorgeous. And those the, the Just Resin products are amazing. It they, blends yes. so smoothly. Mm -hmm. I really love it. Ready? And this is the white. White metallic from Stone Coat. Again, no particular reason why I'm putting it in any particular space. We're just getting it on the board. We've got three different micas or three different metallics, okay? And even within those three, you can see the variances. Mm -hmm. Just, even if it's a tiny variance, it's gonna give our project depth. Last but not least, I put my white down. I try to cover my edges a lot with the white. I like to get that on here. It always highlights what you have on your board. These other colors tend to stand out when you highlight them in the white. So I will come through here. I will get my edges a little bit. I will get the center pieces. I just do a lot of highlighting with it. Now we'll just heat it a little bit. And we're heating it right now to one, take the bubbles out, but also because it's a little bit cooler in here, we want that epoxy to just get a little more fluid so it's a little easier to move. Absolutely, absolutely. Now the first thing I do, I don't go right to the middle. The first thing I do is I get my edges. I know a lot of people wait till the end. I don't, I put that white on there. I usually go right to the edges and I just start in circular motions, just kind of moving that stuff around. And as I'm moving it, I'm touching that edge and I'm rolling it just to get product on there. Because as this stuff moves and melds and starts blending with these other colors, you want it to be able to roll off. Now, Rhonda prepped these boards for us. There's a couple of us here this weekend and she's got all these boards prepped for us and she's routered these edges where the colors will roll off beautifully. Yeah, we wanna try to make sure that we don't have 90 degree angles. These are MDF boards. So this board is actually about three square feet, uh, which is a really good size sample board if you're really trying to take okay. your pattern and making it a little bit bigger. So I've got my edges. What I like to do now is pick up any surface tension. Before I start blending my colors, I always make sure that my surface tension has been covered. So you wanna help me grab this? Yeah. I don't use a lot of tools. I just feel like if you can get your hands on it and feel what you've got going underneath your fingers, then you know what you're doing with your project. I taught her right. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. Yeah, do a lot of my blending there. So we didn't have a lot of surface tension. Mm -hmm. Oh, got a couple there. A little bit, good. So we'll probably let this set just a few minutes. We're, we wanna see how it blends. I'm gonna come back in just a few minutes, maybe five, 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna start letting them really, I'll, I'll move it a little bit together and blend a little more. And then we'll go from there. Why do you wait and let your epoxy set up? And why do you wait 30 minutes or 10 minutes? We're not specifically waiting on a time. Not the, the 30 minute is not really what we're going for. What we're trying to do is get our epoxy to be at a certain stage. 
So here where I'm located, 30 minutes may be, what, 15 or 20 minutes where you live? Sometimes less. Yeah, because she lives down south where it's very hot and very humid. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Florida, my 30 minutes may be your 10 minutes. Right. And if you're up in some of the northern states where it's really cold, my 30 minutes may be your 45 minutes. So what we're doing, is we're trying to get the epoxy to a certain stage. And in this particular case, we don't want it so set up that it's stringy and tacky. Right. All we're trying to do is just get it a little more um, thick, I guess would be the word. Right. We've let this sit about five minutes and it's it's the next stage where it's ready to go. Right. It's not really moving a whole lot right now. It's good. It's going to continue to move for a couple of hours. Right. But right now it's starting. I can tell it's kind of leveled out. And a you can bit. tell it's not extremely hot in here. You don't have it running off your board. You don't have excessive drips. It's at a great stage where you've got a good pattern that's staying on your board. So we're ready to move on. Good. Our right. next phase is going to be we're gonna manipulate it just a little bit with our fingers if you'd like to help me with that side. That I'm not gonna do a lot of movement. I just wanna get my fingers in there okay. and just slightly blend. Maybe not, like where the two colors yeah, are touching? exactly. Right. Not over blending, but just slight. Not move my big cells, but move in between my cells. So we're just kind of following that white that right. you laid down. Exactly. And just bringing the two bigger colors together. together. Perfect. Yep. And just that little bit that you move with your finger is causing some of those to meld together. And, oh, they look very pretty. Now we're going to lay down our diamond dust. Mm. Actually, I'll let Me? Rhonda do the honors. Yay! What are we doing? Just anywhere you want. Just zigzaggy? Yeah, zigzaggy anywhere. Doesn't have All to be right. any specific pattern. We'll call that our whipped cream on our churro mm -hmm. latte marble. That's it. So the next part is, there's no rhyme or reason to this. This is how we're going to add our chocolate. But wait a minute. We could leave this like it is. That's right. This could be a finish. All on its own. But we're going to go to the next step. Absolutely. That was for you, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we're just going to drizzle. I used to do, I used to think less is more. Rhonda's ruined me. Sometimes more can be more. Oh man. This, this brown is amazing. And brown is not my color. I've never liked brown. I've never looked at something and said, hey, that brown is really pretty. This, this is a beautiful brown, brown is beautiful. It is. And I like it though, even though it says it's an opaque color, if you barely add any like you did, did, you can make it more of a transparent. And that's why I started putting it on my popsicle stick because if you squeeze on there, it's just so, so dark. It's right. very, very opaque. Right. So at this point, I just use my fingers and I just blend it in. Okay. I used to use brushes, but I just really feel like I can get a, and I, I also kind of, move it out a little. I don't blend it all. I do want, yeah, I do want some striking features left. Good. And mm. at this point, we're gonna let it sit for a little bit. We're gonna let it meld. We're gonna let it sit there and blend. And we'll come back in a little bit and look at it again. Do we need to hit it just a tiny bit for the bubbles? No, we're going to okay. hit it. We're going to hit it with the torch, but we're not gonna hit it with any alcohol right now. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, guys, so we've let this set about 30 minutes. And again, what we're going for is the epoxy to start setting up and to slow down its movement. So we're still very, very fluid. Uh, fluid, but we're just a little more set up than we were when we first come out of the bucket. So what are we gonna do, Michelle? So we're going to give it a soft hint of granite, a little granification, but not a hard granite. So what I'm going to do is give it a hint of gold not a lot. And I'm going to spray from up top because what gold I. What is that? This is a Rustol. Boy, this is well used. So <laughs> it says Gold Rush. It's a Rustoleum Gold Rush. And I'm going to spray from really high. I don't want this to overpower French beige that we're going to use to give it the granification. 
I want this to be what you see the most, but I want this gold rush to have a hint of glimmer underneath that kind of catches your eye. Yeah, so it's so, just a tiny bit. Yeah, a little awesome. tiny bit, but you gotta spray from up high. Don't, don't come too low with it. Make sure we're spraying good. Oh, yeah. Don't use too much. Don't give it too much, but you see that you've got the gold on there. Yeah. And now you're just kind of randomly putting that down. Yeah, it's not spraying the best for me. I wish we had a better spray here, but we'll get it. It's not. That's it. Rust-Oleum's out. <laughs> now we're going in with what we call Rhonda's Drippity Drip. My Drippity Drip. I didn't know I had a Drippity Drip. <laughs> Up high with the big drops. So those big drops are opening up and letting you see kind of what's underneath there. Exactly. And you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to put way too much on here in the beginning. It's hard not to. You see something moving and you think, well, let me hit it again. But you really want to sit back, let it play out and see where you're at. Oh yeah. It moves and it looks just gorgeous. Yeah, it does. It just has those hints of colors. Yeah. Okay, I want to do a drippity drop. Oh, you want to do some Rhonda? Do a drippity drop. There you go. All right, I'm going to drippity drop just right there. Yep, I missed a piece. So I think for right now, let's step back a minute, give it a few minutes, let's mm -hmm. see where we're at, and we'll come back in just a few minutes. We're going to let that epoxy and that alcohol kind of work together and let that alcohol dissipate. Yeah. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, guys, so we've let it set up. 10 minutes maybe. And we haven't hit it with any more alcohol because we're really liking how it's softening as it's kind of melding that granification together. So I think we're gonna call it quits. Michelle won't let me play with it anymore. <laughs> she told me I'm done. So I love this finish, guys. It is really, really pretty. It's really, really soft. It's got a lot of depth and a lot of neutral colors. I could see this easily in a kitchen or a bathroom vanity. So pretty. Michelle? Where can they find you? I am on Facebook and Instagram, Desert Daisy Designs. All right, y'all look her up. She's amazing. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. Hit the bell for future notifications. And let us know maybe what would you do? Would you add uh, maybe a highlight color? Would you have fogged with a different color? Let us know. Leave us some comments. And check out our online course, onlineepoxypro.com. Also, all of these products are available on my website, rk3designs.com. So until next time, what do we say? Don't, Don't be scared. scared. Move, Move forward and be creative. creative.